Blame Truth here, and we are at the point in Call of Duty's life cycle where I I've shown in previous videos that uh, whether they want you to know it or not, they are down very, very bad. Uh, I believe Warzone Mobile has a 1.6 star rating out of 5 on Android as of me you know, making this video. Uh, I believe that on the one platform it's playable on, iOS, you needed brand new like iPhone 15 to really enjoy the game, really experience the game as it's intended. Otherwise, your phone is liable to melt. And even with the new iPhones, I think it's liable to melt. I'm not touching, I'm not touching the game. Like, legitimately, phones are melting with Warzone Mobile. And I need to get that out there, if nothing else, just to warn you guys. I personally wouldn't play it because it could damage my device. I don't want to shell out over $1,000 for a new phone. So I'm, I'm not even going to risk it. It's not worth my time. But anyway, we're, we're at the point in the Call of Duty life cycle where we're down really bad and we're experiencing max cope. What is cope? Cope is like where, uh, you know, you just fanboy out and you make stuff up. And uh, if you're an unreliable narrator, if your business is basically banking on Call of Duty succeeding for you to do well, then um, I wouldn't trust these people. Some may say that uh, so, some may say that Call of Duty doing poorly means that I'm going to succeed. And, and while you're right, when Call of Duty was good, guess what I did? I just played the game and streamed it on Twitch. So I, I can go either way, man. Like I I'm not really um I don't know. I I'm pretty malleable. I'm I'm like uh, the internet's cockroach. I'll find a way to make things work. I will praise them when they do things right. I will reprimand them when they do things wrong and criticize them when they do things wrong. It just so happens that like 80 to 90 percent of the stuff they do is wrong and I, I can't sit here and praise them or I would be a liar if I came to you and I said wow Warzone Mobile is great I want to drop my balls on my phone over and over while it heats up to get a nice warm scrotum no I, I don't want to do that you know I, I'd be a liar if I well maybe the scrotum thing's true but not the other thing not not playing Warzone Mobile a anyway guys Let's get into the nitty gritty here. So Charlie Intel came out with some information that I, I can't find any actual source for. It's just trust me, bro. And there's no hard numbers to back it up. I try to back up everything I do with hard numbers, even if they don't want me to find the numbers. I try to bring you guys the most accurate information I, as I can with the data that I do have. And you know, that's true. So we have this here. Uh, Charlie Intel says, FWIW, we've heard from multiple sources that Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer and Warzone player count is higher than that of Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 at this point, which is impressive considering MW2 is one of the best selling CODs. Listening to the community and making changes actually works. And I saw this and I was kind of scratching my head. I didn't really question it. I'm just like, huh, that's that's interesting. And I replied with this is both impressive and pathetic, if so, what a fucking colossal failure Modern Warfare 2 was. And I, I thought about this and I'm like, it, it's possible that that's true because Modern Warfare 2, you guys don't understand. Like, like maybe you do because you lived it, right? <laughs> like maybe you played it and you really understand. But Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 were such colossal failures. I looked at this and I didn't really think about it. You know, I, I just did not think about it. And if it is true, it's good for Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone 3, but pathetic, absolutely pathetic for Infinity Ward and their, you know, iteration of the game in the BR. And I'm thinking in my head, like, Infinity War needs to be fired at this point. Like, they can sell a game, but they can't keep people playing it. But then I just kind of saw some people responding to my, you know, uh, Twitter reply here. And I really started thinking about it. And I decided that uh, maybe this was just Charlie Intel not telling the truth. And we're going to get to that after a brief word from this video's sponsor. If you're like me, eating out has become a chore. Fast food isn't fast anymore. It's also very expensive, and a lot of sit-down restaurants, on top of being expensive, can be very, very unhealthy. Some restaurants don't even have a nutritional sheet to follow, even. If you are like me, and you do value these things, then HelloFresh is here to save the day. It is America's number one meal kit, and they deliver fresh ingredients with chef-crafted recipes directly to your door at a price you'll like. Cooking at home can be daunting because you may not be Gordon Ramsay, let's face it. HelloFresh fixes this with 
30 plus calorie smart or protein smart recipes each week. Packed with fresh ingredients, everything arrives pre-portioned and right at your doorstep for less hassle and more mmm. If you're also like me and you want to get outside more this summer, HelloFresh can streamline the cooking process so you can spend more time outdoors or just doing leisure activities. Just choose your recipes and select a delivery date. HelloFresh handles the meal planning and the shopping, so all you have to do is open your box of pre-portioned ingredients and get cooking. And now when you try HelloFresh, you'll get free dessert for life. So treat yourself with one free dessert item per box while your subscription is active. So guys, click the link in the description or use my code and get 16 free meals plus dessert for life while your subscription is active. All right, guys, welcome back to the video. And I'm going to kind of explain why you can't really trust this information from Charlie Intel. I I'm not necessarily calling him uh, an unreliable narrator here, and I'm not calling him a liar either. I think that um, those are some pretty harsh criticisms. I think this is just fanboyism and, and seeing what you want to see and not wanting to admit that the golden goose may be cooked here. The more I think about it, I, I just don't buy what he said. And it's mainly because of this. And we're going to get into the Twitter discourse that kind of made me change my opinion here in just a second. But I, I want to go back a year ago, and I covered this in a recent video, but I think it bears repeating here for this specific topic. So about a year ago, OXO Museum in Spain, which is a huge outfit. It's not a small time raggedy ass museum. Activision actually went there for their exhibit and revealed the live player count for their exhibit there at OXO Museum. Just to show you guys what I'm talking about here, OXO, I mean, it's got a 4.7 out of 5 <laughs> uh, rating on Google reviews, uh, over a thousand Google reviews in Malaga, Spain, um, a year ago, and this is from Insider Gaming right here, a trusted leaker by the name of Tom Henderson posted this, a new museum in Malaga, Spain named the OXO Museum has revealed actual player numbers for Call of Duty for the first time in years. An image sent to Insider Gaming by Flex Z, who attended the grand opening of the OXO Museum yesterday shows the live player numbers for Warzone 2, Modern Warfare 2, and Call of Duty Mobile. Knowing what we know based on some number crunching by Sub 1 KD, these numbers are accurate. They, they fall in line from what he deduced from estimating, guesstimating based on the player numbers delivered under oath by Bobby Kotick and then you know, dividing that by steam it's a lot of math it's a lot of trouble when they just could reveal the player numbers like they did back in the day but they're a bunch of pussies and they don't want to ever since ghosts failed they just hit all that stuff and then uh, we'll tout some weird metric by wording things oddly and, and whatnot so yeah don't trust activision and honestly i wouldn't trust charlie intel either but anyway uh this museum reported the live player numbers and charlie intel said this completely unfounded one guy one person is trying to go against an entire video game museum in spain this huge operation that activision attended and like revealed these numbers at a museum in spain is claiming to have player count numbers for mw2 warzone 2 and mobile but it appears those numbers are not official not even close to accurate activision doesn't share player counts specifically for games anymore to anyone and see, that's just not true, because uh, they're forced to share the player numbers to Steam. They're just forced to do it. They have to do that. For two, how would he know these numbers are not official or accurate or whatever if he doesn't know the player numbers? Like, how does he know these aren't accurate if they don't reveal player numbers to anyone? That's a contradiction literally in the tweet. And I I don't know, this one guy downing this rumor, and nobody bought this, by the way. No, Nobody said, oh, wow, these are the official numbers. After he tweeted this, the hype kind of died down. Um, so... When I go back to this tweet here, this is this tweet saying that uh, multiple sources say that MW3 MP and Warzone player count is higher than that of MW2 and Warzone 2 at this point. I just, I don't buy it. I no longer buy it. I mean, if we just look at the hard numbers on Steam, again, this is the only metric we can track here, guys. This is the only metric we can track. If we look at the hard numbers on Steam, none of this adds up. It just does not add up. We know for a fact that... Uh, I believe Modern Warfare 3, where it was tracked, I believe that was uh, overseas or whatever, sold about 40% less than Modern Warfare 2. I don't, I don't think we have any official sales numbers for the US yet. I could be wrong here, man. Again, everything is just, it's all in secret with this game, this company, this franchise. I, I, it's so hard to just get the truth. I just want the truth. I just want the hard data. Why is it so difficult? But if we look at Steam charts, 
Nothing adds up with, with these claims. It just simply does not add up mathematically. And you could say it's just Steam, yada yada. We've proven from deducing that Steam represents about 12 to 15% of the total Call of Duty player base. This Call of Duty player base is divided between Warzone, uh, Modern Warfare 3, and Modern Warfare 2. So these numbers on Steam are all three games combined, okay? If we look at the player numbers here, compared to last March, not only are they considerably lower, they're about 12,000 lower, but they have an extra game on their side here. Let's take away, let's just say 5,000 people are playing Modern Warfare 2 on Steam right now. And that's kind of shooting it low, but let's just say that. We got like 69,000 average players compared to 86,000 average players in the month of March. I just, I don't know. And considering these numbers are falling as time kind of goes by here uh, with Modern Warfare 3, Warzone 3, etc. I just, I just cannot buy it. I cannot buy it. I mean, unless the console numbers are radically different. I mean, radically different compared to Steam. I, I just cannot buy it. And I can't buy it from someone who told essentially a blatant lie as far as I can tell. Never corrected himself on it. Doesn't show actual sources. Isn't saying like who's leaking this information. Uh, whenever I give you guys leaks, I say like this is from Tom Henderson. This is from Modern Warfare 2 OG, whatever. I'm not getting that here, and I think we're being lied to. Let's consult the Twitter interaction I had after this, though, because I, I just want you guys to kind of be in the know here. Someone was saying, like, I just don't buy this, and then this person says, this isn't looking at sales, though. They were saying that MW2 sales were way more than Modern Warfare 3, so that's irrelevant. The point is, MW3 had much higher player retention than Modern Warfare 2 did. The only people who would care are Activision shareholders and not the people who actually play these games. And I'm just saying, like, percentage-wise here, looking at this thread of them talking, percentage-wise, it probably kept more players. Maybe that's what Charlie Intel's referencing. I, I would believe that. I think that less people have stopped playing from the initial purchase on Modern Warfare 3 compared to Modern Warfare 2. I think that's a very valid metric, one that can be backed up with the hard numbers and the data we do have, right? Yeah, makes sense. Percentage-wise, if they kept a larger percentage of the player base compared to, you know, who bought it, I'd buy that. But the drops on Steam are too much, and there's an extra game to count with those numbers too. I just seriously doubt it has more active players right now than the last game. This guy says, exactly, those tables include both CODs due to how they unified their launchers, and MW3 is downloaded through Warzone Launcher, probably because they didn't want people looking at numbers, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I just refuse to believe a game which sold 40% less somehow has more active players, even if the last game was utter shit. Now, again, that 40%, we don't know if that carries over to America. I couldn't find any data, just the Google search on that, but we do know that it's around 38% actually. Guys, I'm just gonna say this, and I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus, but uh, some people that I thought were, were pretty cool, reputable sources in the community, I'm not really buying what they're putting down anymore. And like, I had some uh, issues with Ace over uh, Christmas because I was trying to get to the bottom of the AI bot thing. Rumors were running rampant about AI bots, Activision and co were not saying anything about it, just them saying, no, there's not bots, would have would have squashed that rumor. We had to wait months for them to give us an answer, and they said, and I quote here, Call of Duty multiplayer does not use bots as part of the general matchmaking process. What does that mean? I don't know. Why did they word it like that? I, I think I know why. <laughs> It's a way to get around the actual truth. Uh, it looks like that at least. And um, I don't know, not to mention a popular leaker by the name of Alex said that uh, he was able to spawn bots into Warzone, not Warzone Mobile, which I think they're there, but just regular Warzone. He was able to spawn them in with console commands um, and messing with the game files and whatnot. So, uh, too long didn't read. Just be careful with, with who you believe on here. I'm not saying even believe me blindly, but I think my track record speaks for itself. If I am wrong about something, I will correct it in a future video. I am wrong a lot, mainly because I don't have a lot of information to go off of. Mainly because sometimes I get information from a third party source who may not be reputable. I don't know. We're getting information from first party sources here that are not reputable. So there's that. Um, Guys, just want to make this video. I, I hope you enjoyed and uh, take a lot of stuff you read about this game and franchise now, especially good news with a grain of salt, because the hard data shows that things aren't that great right now. 
and I don't know how else to put it. I can't spin it in a positive light. Take it as you will. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Advice. 